On today's show, we're going to be unboxing and taking a first look at the Comica CVMWM100, and we're going to find out exactly how it stands up to my Sennheiser, which costs about four times as much, actually a little bit more than that. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here at youtube.com slash photo joseph where we talk about all kinds of things, photo and video and live streaming related. And today it's more on the video and live streaming side of things with a microphone, a new microphone, this company called Comica, which we've talked about on the show many times. This is a brand out of China that is making all kinds of interesting mics at very, very low cost. And um, they sent this out to me and said, hey, would you do a little video about it? So I said, well, why not? That's kind of fun to do. You guys like these sort of things. I like these sort of things. We're going to find out how good this thing is. The price is $188. So it is not dirt cheap, but when compared to a Sennheiser wireless pack, which is around $800, it is, well, a quarter of the cost. Now, we are going to, uh, we're, I've already unboxed it, it's not like a real unboxing, but we're going to unbox this, I'm going to show you what's in here, and then I'm going to plug this thing into my system here, and you are going to hear side by side the difference between this and the Sennheiser. Now just to make sure I don't forget to tell you this as well, the Sennheiser, obviously on its own, it's got many advantages, it is higher end gear, but it also has one extra advantage in that the microphone that I'm using, the one that I'm talking onto right now, is an upgraded mic, it's not the one that comes with the Sennheisers, it is a directional mic. I will one day do a comparison of it, of it and the Omni mic that it came with. I know I haven't done that yet, I will. But that is giving it a, a more directional feel, which is why if I turn my head this way or if I turn my head that way, you definitely hear a levels difference where you probably didn't before, but you also hear a lot less background noise. So this is the mic that I'm using right now. So it's, it in itself is a little bit of an upgrade. So it's a bit of an unfair comparison, but that's okay. We wanna see what happens if you compare a kind of industry standard, good microphone. There are certainly better ones than the Sennheiser, but an industry standard, good quality microphone to something that is considerably less expensive. So with that said, let's get this show on the road. I do wanna remind you though, if you've never been to the show before, I wanna remind you about this. We operate on a value for value concept here on the show, meaning if you feel like you have taken value from today's show, I would most appreciate it if you would consider putting value back in. Head over to photojoseph.com support. There's all kinds of ways to support the show there. You can, you can do uh, uh, monthly contributions through PayPal or Patreon. We might actually get rid of the Patreon thing. Don't, don't, don't do the Patreon, we're probably gonna get rid of that. Um, there's there's my linda.com training there is the ability to hire me directly if you want to do something big and big and deep and powerful and entertaining um, and at photojoseph.com we actually have a site membership that doesn't have anything to do with this specific show it has to do with something we call live training which is all about software live training but we're also going to be adding a business show it's going to be like i haven't quite settled on the name the business of the business is kind of what i'm working with here and it's going to be about the business side of businesses like photography and video and YouTubing and so on, but all about the business side of it. So I think it'll be interesting. That's going to be something that'll be available for members only. So head over to photojoseph.com slash support and check that out. In the meantime, let's get this thing started, shall we? It is a lovely little box. Uh, we'll just we care about the box. Do we? Let's just open this thing. It comes um, in a nice little case, which is kind of cool. Oop. And this is, uh, it's actually good. It's a nice soft case that holds all the stuff. Let's do a top down on this thing. You can see, ooh, that's kind of a wide, a tight camera view. I forgot that. That is so that we can see, once we get in, what's really in there. But what we've got in this case, let's just go back to the main shot. In this case is, let's go to the, we'll go to the main compartment first. We'll, we'll come to the accessories momentarily. If I can find the zipper for the main compartment, there it is. It is a double zippered case here. Open that up, there we go. Now, if I do a top-down view, we should get a little bit more of a, see what's in there. There we go. There's our, if I can figure out which way is up, there's our mics. You can see what they look like in all their glorious glory. These are larger than a Sennheiser pack. Um, can I do this without breaking anything? Let me see if I can pull this off. There we go. For size comparison, there's the Sennheiser pack and there's the Comica. So the Comica is definitely larger. Um, antenna height, yeah, everything about it is bigger. It is lighter though. It is not by much. The Sennheiser's metal. This is plastic. This has doubled in weight since I added the batteries to it. I've already put the batteries in. Um, it has pretty much doubled in weight. So when I first took it out, it was like, whoa, this thing doesn't weigh anything. And now the battery's in there, I'm going, oh, it's actually a little bit heavier. But it is an all plastic case on there. So you've got the transmitter and the receiver. I've already attached the belt clip to this. We'll take a look at the camera mount in a moment. One of the first things that you're gonna notice about this that is very, very interesting, let's go for a top down, actually we'll do a close up here. First thing you'll notice is that this has, let's flip that over upside down, both a line in and a mic input, line in and mic. This is the transmitter. So you can plug in, you can plug in something that is a line level input into the transmitter. 
as well as a mic level, which is pretty cool. That's something the Sennheiser doesn't actually have. Kind of neat. Uh, software interface control in here, we'll go through all of that. And conversely, if we look at the, let's put that the right way again, look at the receiver, this has something very, very interesting. So there's our output to go into the camera or mixer or whatever. And it has a headphone jack. Now this, this I think is extremely cool. The headphone jack means that you can monitor your audio even if your camera doesn't have a headphone jack. Not all cameras have a headphone jack. If you have a camera that has a microphone input, there are some cameras that have a mic input, but no headphone jack. So you can see your levels on the screen, but you can't actually monitor them, which is pretty interesting. So this will give you that, which I think is quite, quite cool. Um, also, if you're plugging into a mixer or just some other thing that where monitoring the audio off of just that feed is a little bit more complicated, you can plug your headphones directly into this. So that's a win on that. I think that's a nice feature. So just wanted to cover that real quick. Let's see what else is in the bag here. So we've also got your standard, there we go, microphone. We'll be using this, obviously. You have your standard eighth inch input, so three and a half millimeter input for your camera. So plug one into the receiver, no, the end of the camera. But it also comes with, and this is why we're gonna be able to test it the way we are going to today, it comes with an XLR input. So you can either plug into your camera or directly into an XLR interface, which would mean on a camera using something like the XLR1 on the uh, Lumix cameras, or as we're gonna do here, I'm gonna plug this into my mixer, allowing me to put it side by side with the Sennheiser. So the fact that it comes with this is actually the reason that I was willing to look at it. Um, I, you know, I get a lot of emails these days if you wanna look at our, our stuff, and uh, the fact that this had a, a XLR was kind of the primary reason that I said yes. Then you've got two cold shoe little mounty guys here. So the bottom of the mic itself, let's take a look at the receiver. The bottom of the mic has a quarter 20 plate on it, quarter 20 hole, so we can just take that screw, screw that in. And this is now how we're gonna mount this on the camera. It's a little bit snug actually. Um, what's odd though about this is once this is on here, this is no longer going to fit into the case. So I'm gonna have to take this off every time, which is not like it's a major deal, but it's a little bit weird and annoying. It's actually a little bit weird and annoying that it doesn't really fit in properly. Let me try the other one. So I'll kind of, it's like I've half unboxed this already. Um, eh, okay, that one's going in better. All right, there we go. So that one's fitting in a little bit better. So that's how that goes on. And then it also comes with two belt clip wire packs, which I've already attached to one of these. So if we look at that, you see that's already on there. So it's just a really simple little thing. It does mean that it could come off quite easily, but I don't think it's a concern. It's, it's on there reasonably well. So you could attach either one of these to a cold shoe or to your belt pack. So it's not like they're, you're locking in one or the other. It also comes with a, a, I love the names of these things. This is a dead kitten. <laughs> Nobody cry. Um, but this is a windsock. It is quite a robust one. I would say it's also, it's also remarkably soft. This is like the softest dead kitten I've ever experienced. But it is a shedding dead kitten as I experienced as well. So not really cool to have something where the hairs are falling out because you mic this up on somebody other than this being massively, I mean, this is like a woman's brooch decoration kind of a thing. It's huge, but it sheds. Not too keen on that. I would get rid of that, get yourself a different one because you don't really want hairs coming off of your dead cat onto your model. Okay, so with that all said, let's take a look at the interface on this thing. It is, um, it is an interesting UI. Let's go for the overhead view here. To turn it on, you got a power button up here, power button slash mute button. So you press and hold that for a moment and it will turn on. It does have an LCD backlit interface, so that's awesome. Now, here's one of the massive differences between the, tran between the um, Comica and the Sennheiser. On the Sennheiser, you can adjust levels on both the transmitter and the receiver. So both the body pack and the thing going into the camera. On this one, you cannot adjust levels on the transmitter, which is, I find a little bit odd because that's something that you wanna be able to adjust depending on the type of mic that you have or your mic placement. You want to maximize what you're getting. Essentially, the rule that you follow is you start from the source and move your way towards the destination. So I would maximize the levels on my transmitter and then maximize the levels on the receiver, basically turn them up as far as I can without peaking, back it off a little bit for safety, and that's your point. Uh, and then you continue that throughout the chain. I can't do that on here. So my first step I can't actually do. I dug through the interface, I looked in the manual. If it's in there, it is so well hidden, they really don't want you to know it. You can adjust levels on the receiver, but not on the transmitter. Interesting. So that's the first kind of flaw that I'm gonna say is on here. Now, once this is on, I know you can't see it yet very well because it's not backlit yet, but that little icon there says that it's locked. So if I push anything, nothing happens. Push and hold on the set button for a couple of seconds and it lights up and that becomes unlocked. Now I press the set button again to cycle through the settings. So there's, there's a 25 channel, uh, I think it's, yeah, 25 channels to choose from. So I've got it on channel one on both the transmitter and the receiver. This is cool, RF, high or 
low. So this is the radio frequency, the transmitting power, if you will. If you have it on high, you will get more range, but it will eat up more battery power. If you're closer to your subject, you can leave it on low and your batteries will last longer. So that's nice. I, I think that's a pretty good feature. Uh, you know, maximize your battery life that way. We're going to leave this on high because of what we're going to be doing today. So let me, uh, it kind of timed itself out there. There we go. Uh, so channel is on one. RF we're going to leave on high. Um, low cut filter I've left off. And that's it. That's all you have on here. That is the extent of the controls that you have on the transmitter. On the receiver, let me get rid of this stupid thing off the back here. On the receiver, you have one extra input, one extra control. Let's turn that back on, and that is going to be the levels. So let's, once again, unlock this thing. And there, now it's unlocked, so I cycle through. There's my channel settings. Obviously, that has to match. There's my volume, which is currently maxed out at 15. So that is one of the things when we were setting this up earlier. I had to max this out to get adequate levels on my mixer. So, I mean, it works, um, but I feel like I should be able to get a little bit more power out of this. Um, now it, it locks out pretty quickly here. Uh, okay, there, now it's unlocked again. So we had the channel setting, the volume setting, and that's it. I guess those are the only two controls. Incidentally, this top button, the power button, also doubles as a mute button. Push it once to mute the mic, push and hold it to lock it. Okay, that's the extent of the setup. That's the extent of the mic. So let's get this thing plugged in, plug the right thing into the right thing. This is the, uh, this is the receiver, so I'm going to plug my output in there. Always lock, always. I know it's one of those like, oh, you don't have to lock it, lock it. Just lock it, it keeps it from crackling, keeps it from getting any, um, any motion interference. I'm gonna plug this, I know you can't see it, but I'm plugging that into my mixer there. And now we're gonna take the mic itself. Untangled, oh good, it is untangled. Make sure I plug this into the mic in, not the line in, and then we're gonna start testing this. By the way, for those of you who are watching live, make sure if you have any questions about this or anything, frankly, stick them into the live chat. We are monitoring the live chat, it's right there. Hello, lovely, lovely. Um, we have a live chat on here and we will do a Q&A afterwards. In the meantime, while I'm wiring this up, Andrew Burns says, I just bought some Sennheiser EW100G3s off Facebook Market for 300 bucks. What a bargain. Man, you, you scored. That's a good mic. That's what I'm using here. EW, where's the model? EW, EW100G3. Exactly the same thing. Love these. All right, let me get this into place. There we go, putting it really close to the other one. Um, do you think I got a good deal? Yes, I do. I think as my reaction has just told, yes, you definitely got a good deal. All right, I'm going to put this on my back as well. And so now we're going to bring Ryan into the show. And what Ryan is going to do is he is going to toggle between the two microphones. Now, we're also going to turn the EQ off on the Sennheiser. The Sennheiser has been EQ'd for this show through my um, XR mixer so that it sounds optimal for you guys. So that we can balance things out and play fair, he is going to disable the equalizer, which I am going to off. assume it is off. And you are hearing Ryan as well. So you're gonna hear Ryan talking and he's going to explain uh, which microphone we're listening to right now. So he's gonna toggle between the Sennheiser and the Comica. I'm just gonna ramble away for a little bit. In fact, I think what we'll do is go through some of the questions here, see if there's anything on there and that, uh, that we wanna address. And while I'm talking, Ryan is gonna switch back and forth. Ryan, go ahead and start doing it. And he's gonna switch back and forth and he's just gonna say as he switches, Comica, Sennheiser, and so on. All right, so, so this is the Comica. All right, so we're on the Comica now. There you go. You did hear that. Please confirm for me that you guys are hearing him. And uh, let's uh, let's get this thing started here. So, and I just realized I'm not recording your voice, Ryan, saying that. Oh, we'll figure it out. Okay, uh, let's see here. We have a question came in from Sharvax. I saw that. Where did it go? It was on here somewhere. There it is. So it has no automatic channel scanner to pick up the channel with the least interference. Absolutely correct, Sharvax. This has no automatic scanner. If you're not familiar with this feature on the Sennheisers, it has many more than 25 channels. I don't know how many, but it's a lot more. And it has an auto scan feature, which is incredible, which I have failed to use in the past and regretted it. But what the uh, Sennheiser okay. will do is you push a button on it and auto scans the frequencies in the area where it is, in the room that it's in right now, and it looks for the clearest frequencies and it stores those into memory, and then you can swap between all the ones that it has picked, so you can pick one that's, you know, even for your ears the best. So Sennheiser. that is a fantastic feature that is not available in the Comic Cup. In-Depth Photo and Video says, let me as well bring this chat up here. In-Depth Photo and Video says, does the volume on the receiver affect the headphone out? Oh, that's a very good question. I haven't tested that. Um, I would imagine that it does, but it is affecting the... Well, you know, that's Comica. funny that you say that. Now that you say that, I'm wondering if that is actually affecting the output or if it's just the volume of the headphone. Okay, we're gonna test that right now. Um, Ryan, leave the Comica on for a moment. I am right. going to set the volume control and I'm gonna start bringing it down. Let's see if you're getting any difference. Yeah, you're hearing a difference. I yeah, I know, you're losing it. Okay, yeah, so that is, let's get it back up again. So that, the volume control is affecting the output 
to the mixer or to the camera, which is what I expected it to be doing. Uh, whether it affects the output for the headphones themselves, I don't actually know. Interesting. Um, In-depth photo and video also saying, could you use the headphone out to boost the signal? You mean like take dual outputs and feed them in? Maybe. That's an interesting idea. Um, not something I want to test right now, but that's an interesting issue. Uh, Tim Beaton says, might be issues with the licensing use in some countries. Um, let me pick up the box that I threw across the room. And I did see something in the manual how it has been updated for the newer UHF standards. Yeah, it says on here, wireless frequency. There's even, check this out, there is a sticker over the, uh, that's the wrong one. Here we go. I don't know if you can really see that there. Let me focus on that. There is a sticker over the frequency readout because they have updated it. So it's now at 520 megahertz to 534.1 megahertz, which is, I've got to fly in here now that the door's open, which is the, I'm pretty sure, that is the new range that we're allowed to work within. So that's good. Um, all right, let's see here. Mark Sheffin says, any ideas for a headset only pack? I use custom fit in-ears and want to go wire-free. Well, the one that I'm using right now has actually been working out great for me. It, the company that makes it is called Galaxy Audio. Um, we'll make sure we put a link to this down below. It is uh, the AnySpot AS1100T. This was gifted to me by one of my fabulous, beautiful, wonderful viewers. Thank you, you know who you are. Um, so I'm, I'm loving this. And then I'm using my own custom ears with it. They're not custom fit, but they're on my own in-ear monitors that I'm using with it. Um, it's just got a standard headphone pack. Okay. I think um, we've done enough switching back and forth. Um, Ryan, it sounds like you stopped switching back and forth. I don't know. Because you told me to. Oh, well, I meant to start again once we did the... Okay. Um, let's uh, switch me back over to the Sennheiser. And let's, uh, let's do our range test here. So it sounds like it looks like yeah, I'm on the Sennheiser now. Yep. Now we're going to do our little range test. So let's... Take a walk outside, shall we? You can see what a lovely, lovely day we're having here. This is me, this is me. So we're gonna start right here. So I am uh, not that far away from the mic pack. It is, however, which, my, uh, are we still on the Sennheiser, Ryan? Yes. Okay, we're still on the Sennheiser. So I gotta get rid of the gate. Um, and, oh right, and Ryan's turning the gate off. So the gate is what is keeping, so we usually have the gate on inside, so if there's any background hiss or noise, whatever, the mic just cuts that out when I'm not talking. We have disabled that now. It is because we want both mics to be totally equal um, out here. It is, uh, it is loud out here because there's a fan out, out from our neighbors. It's kind of annoying. But at this point, I'm going to switch back and forth, Ryan. Uh, at this point, we are doing a little test to see the difference between the two mics. So that's the Comica. Okay. Uh, between the two mics with a little bit of distance and it's not just distance there is a metal wall in fact here let me just show you this is the uh, the door into my studio Sennheiser. here that is the metal door that's the inside there so this is a full-on metal building which really wreaks havoc with these things now i'm not very far away i would at this point i am Comica. 30 feet away but the wall in between us now we're gonna get a little start walking backwards here and we're gonna find out if either one of them starts dropping out. Uh, we're gonna go a little bit farther. I just put another 10-ish feet or so in between me and the mic pack. And again, now we're, we're definitely not line of sight. There's a couple of sheets of metal in between us. And I'm wondering Sennheiser. at this point whether um, either mic is performing very well or not. So I don't know, Ryan, you tell me, what are we hearing here? Um, I'm hearing stuff in my ear, a little bit of static, but are we, uh, are we getting decent performance out of both mics right now? Should I take another few steps back? Well, yeah, let me set it to the Comica and It'll be comical at every single step. <laughs> okay, all right, so Comica is now on. I'm gonna start backing up here. Um, oh, that yeah, cutting in every and out. Step. Yeah, I can hear that cutting in and out. Let, <laughs> let me, so I'm gonna turn around so that the pack, which is on my back here, is facing. So I, I can already tell the difference there um, with that. So that's good, that is better when I've got that. Um, ooh, now they're starting to drop as well. It is better when it's facing, as soon as I turn around. Yeah, nothing. Good. Okay, hey Ryan, um, switch me back to the Sennheiser real quick. All right. So we're gonna find out if we're getting the same kind of uh, interference with the Sennheiser or not. So uh, are, are we on the Sennheiser, Ryan? We are. We are on the Sennheiser, excellent. Okay, so now, well the Sennheiser, I can hear me, so I guess that means you can hear me as well. There might be a few little drops in there, I'm hearing a little bit of hissing going on, but at least the Sennheiser is working at this point. But of course, if the audio is not perfect, it's, it's not usable. I mean, it does have to be perfect. So let's, uh, let's take a few steps closer. Yeah, I can hear that dropping in and out as well. So let's, let's get back to where the Sennheiser is performing well. I think at this point it's going pretty good. Let me do a little pirouette here. And yeah, the Sennheiser seems to be behaving quite well here. All right, let's switch us back to the Comica and see what's All happening right, here. On the so we're on the Comica now. Uh, I'm going to do my little pirouette again. I'm, I am hearing more crowds happening there. Definitely some more crowds. And that's one of those things where a single drop kills your whole tank. You can't, you just can't deal with that. You can't have those cuts. So uh, yeah, definitely not a good thing to have. All right, so I guess that's it. Here we're going to do more, I guess more of a line of sight test. Uh, I'm just going to rotate the camera here and... Sennheiser. 
let's uh, let's spin this thing a little bit. We're going to spin it towards this wall here, which is obviously a very exciting wall. Let's adjust the exposure on that. And now I am. I'm pretty much line of sight. I can hear a little bit of windows. Yeah, I can see my receivers in the other side of the room there. So I am line of sight. I'm also getting a lot more audio from, a lot more interference from the uh, the fans, Sonica. which is super annoying. But this is what mics sound like. Both of those mics sound like out in a outdoor environment with some really annoying, loud, obnoxious fan going on next door. Unfortunately, I can't do anything about that, but that is what it is. And this is the kind of thing that sometimes you just have to deal with. You know, you got to record something and you got all this other crappy interference and that's the way it is. So at this point, if I'm doing a little pirouette, Sound little spin it. here, um, we shouldn't be getting any dropouts on either mic or not. So I think it's, um, I think it's reasonably acceptable. So I, I think what we're hearing now, okay, I'm gonna head back in. Um, I think what we're kind of concluding here is that we are able to get, that we are able to get reasonable sound, at least reasonable connection off of both. But I wanna know what you guys think, what you guys are hearing, because you're hearing it better than I am, because I'm hearing other stuff in my ears as well. So I wanna know what you guys think. Stick it into the comments. We are going to, into the chat room and the comments, we are going to, uh, we're gonna come back in just a moment and do a little Q&A and have a discussion about what we just heard. So I hope this is interesting. I hope that was informative. Um, if you decide to buy one of these based off of this uh, this little test and review, then there is an affiliate link down below. I, I obviously most certainly appreciate using those affiliate links. That is one of the many ways that we help support the show. And um, uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. Let's go do a Q&A, shall we?